guys. Welcome to our class on biomes, zonation, and succession. In this lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about the different biomes that are present on the planet and how those biomes change over time through the process of succession and also the changes that take place along abiotic gradients within those biomes through the process of zonation. So let's get started. First, it's important to understand that there are five basic classifications of biomes on the planet. There are tundra biomes, grasslands, deserts, coral reefs, and tropical rainforests. And you can see on this map the layout of where some of those are. Tropical rainforests are close to the equator, and then above those you have coral reef environments, Above that is desert environments, and hot deserts are typically the ones that are at right at 30 degrees. Cold deserts are a little bit higher in latitude than hot deserts are. Then you have grasslands taking over big portions of the map on both sides. Grasslands are typically pretty productive areas. It's where we grow a lot of food. And then up in the extreme north and south, you have Arctic tundra environments. Um, alpine tundra environments are caused by altitude, not by latitude, so you find them high up on mountains. So there are some characteristics that are common to all of these different biomes, no matter where they are. And in any tropical rainforest, you see very high productivity. Rainforests and coral reef ecosystems are the most productive of any ecosystem environment on the planet. And they have a lot of plant growth. They're hot, wet areas. They get a lot of solar insulation and a lot of rain, which allows a lot of plants to grow there, which supports all other kinds of life. Deserts are not as productive. They tend to have low biodiversity and not very many species due to the really inconsistent rainfall and variable temperatures. Temperate grasslands are used for growing crops. Their precipitation is pretty much equal to evaporation, and we express that as P equals E, and that gives them a good soil profile that allows people to grow food there. Arctic tundra environments are not very productive and have very low biodiversity. They're a good example of a biome that's in a state of what we called static equilibrium in the first topic. So with a little bit of understanding of how these biomes tend to function on a scale of productivity with tropical rainforests being the most productive and Arctic tundras being the least productive, Let's move on to our next idea, which is how these environments form over time. And that happens through the process of succession. So succession is defined as how an ecosystem changes over time. That's a terrible line. You get the idea. How an ecosystem changes over time from a bare inorganic surface to what we call a climax community, where you have complex food webs, and a really resilient ecosystem that is able to withstand change. And no matter what environment this happens in, it follows the same basic steps. First, there's colonization, where what we call our selected or pioneer species start to move in to an environment. Then there's establishment, which is where once these our selective species have started to create a hospitable climate, species diversity starts to increase and soil starts to develop. Then there's a stage of competition where all kinds of organisms are fighting for survival in a given environment. K-selected species or more stable species start to develop. And then there's stabilization where the species that don't make it drop off and the resilient final state ecosystem is left behind. We're gonna go into more detail on a couple of the aspects of succession, starting with how productivity functions in succession. So remember we talked about productivity in the last class, and we talked about gross primary productivity and net primary productivity. 
Both of these start low because if there's not very much living matter, there's not going to be very much productivity. Gross productivity goes up as species are growing in size, and then once all the species in an environment have become full size, it tends to sort of level off. Net primary productivity goes up as the species are growing, and then tends to even dip after a climax community has been reached because the species don't have to grow anymore, their net productivity goes down. Um, we, a lot of times, human beings, cause what people call arrested succession. And that's when we purposefully stop the process of succession, the development of an ecosystem, to do something like cultivate crops. Because for us, it's advantageous if this net primary productivity stays really high, and then we can grow food. So those are important things to note in terms of how productivity changes as an ecosystem is being developed. But there are other things that change too, and some of the things that ecologists look at are the changes in size of organisms, energy flow, soil and the soil profile, biodiversity, and productivity. These first three tend to go up and then level off at a climax community. Biodiversity and productivity both go up, peak, and then sort of drop back down after the stage of competition is complete and all the organisms that are present in an environment have reached their full size. Let's go on to the next slide and talk a little bit about the kinds of species that are present at different stages of succession. When we talk about colonization, we are mostly talking about our selected species. These species follow a J curve for population growth. They have a small size, a short life, they grow rapidly, they have lots of children, but not a lot of them survive. They're bad parents, and they're adapted to extreme environments. On this offspring chart, you can see the survival curve for our selected species here. There's a lot of our selected species that are born or that are present at the beginning of an ecosystem, and then the number of our selected species tends to die off. K-selected species are what replace them. K-selected species are what we think of as successful mammal and large animal populations. They have a large size, a long life. They don't have very many children, but they take good care of them, and they are adapted to living in stable environments. The offspring curve for K-selected species looks like this. They only have a few children, but all of those children are expected to live to old age. So once you have a basic understanding of how ecosystems change over time, you can also look at how ecosystems change along what we call an abiotic gradient. And remember an abiotic gradient, oopsies, that's one of our vocabulary words from earlier in the course. It's a non-living aspect of the environment, something like temperature or water depth or altitude or pH. And you have an example of zonation here. These different colors of blue represent the different zones of this intertidal area. And you can see pretty clearly that there's different things living in each of these different zones. And that ecosystem is changing dramatically along the environmental gradient, in this case of water depth, which also affects temperature. So, when we talk about biomes, it's important to keep in mind both the processes of zonation and succession. Your homework has a little, like a review of all of these different topics. The optional reading is pages 99 to 124 in the Oxford Press Environmental Systems and Societies book. And your comprehension questions are compare and contrast between a pioneer community and a climax community. So that has to do with succession. And also explain the differences in productivity between rainforests and deserts. So that's sort of taking a meta look at these two ecosystems, all of the changes that happen within them, and being able to explain why those changes occur. 
Compare and contrast is a new IB command term for us. And remember, if you are asked to compare two things, you need to offer similarities. And if you are asked to contrast them, you need to provide differences. So for these three points, you should provide both similarities and differences between a pioneer community and a climax community. Good luck. Take a stab at those homework questions, and when you are ready, we will go over the answers in the review video. See you there.